Hi again, Luke here again with you and welcome back to the video series on how you can build your own hydrofoil from home. Thanks for joining me again and in this video we'll be carrying on with the fuselage and this is the final video for the fuselage so we're going to finish the, we'll finish this right now. So in this video we're going to cover three things. We're going to trim uh, the all of the corners and just finish the shaping with a router just a pencil round just to soften all of these edges so that if you accidentally kick the foil underwater and things like that it's not going to hurt quite as much anyway uh, and we're also going to round the nose of the fuselage over so that it's a bit little more hydrodynamic as it's coming into the water so it'll be something similar to that and then we're also going to just countersink the underside of the screws. So let's get into it. So the first step will be just to round the radius on the nose of the fuselage. You can pretty much use anything round just to use as a template here, just to mark this radius. So something like this, just put it on the front of the nose and we can just mark a, a small radius there. Really, you can just do this by eye as well. So you just mark something that's close and then I'm just going to use a hacksaw just to take the corner off. That looks pretty good, I think. You can see just a round around the nose there. And now we'll route the, the corners of the aluminium. So I'm just going to be using a regular pencil round. I think that's a quarter inch pencil round. And we'll just I'm just going to be using it in a battery trimmer. It doesn't need a lot of power in order to actually do it. Let's go through marking where we need to mark the fuselage because it's really important that we don't go too far. So for instance, you can see here on the existing one where it stops before it in would intersect with the mast. With this particular fuselage, because we've got the extra width, we can actually run that round past the mast, but we definitely need to stop before we get into the front wing. And then the same in the rear wing here, you can see it's stopping. So we'll mark that out now. So the pencil round, where, where to stop the pencil round is not actually specified on the plans. But like I said, for this one inch, we can actually run the pencil round further forward. So I'm just going to mark the back of the wing. That's what you're essentially doing. So if you make a different size wing, you just want to mark where the wing is going to finish. So for this particular one, we're 15 millimeters in front. That's where the wing finishes um, and at, at the nose. And so we're coming back 150 millimeters, which is the size of our actual wing in this in this plan and so I'm just going to draw a line all the way across I find that when you start routing this can get a little hard to remember and so you have to be really clear about what is getting routed and what is not getting routed so I just like to cross this out so that when we're coming along it's very obvious that that is what that's the line we're going to stop or start depending on, on which way we go around. So then this will stay completely square um, and then if we flip it over on the flat surface of the bottom we've got the same idea. So this way actually the wing the, the fuselage sticks out 5 mil so it actually goes 5 mil past so then we come in 5 mil and then we have 80 mil for the width of the um, wing so it's actually going to be 85 millimeters from the back of the fuselage to where the front of the wing will be again going to mark that out nice and clear and this is where actually just there we go. again just block that off so we know that we're not going to go too far there. Okay, so now what we'll do, uh, the way I like to route it is actually on the, on the 
uh, the top and the bottom of the fuselage. So the router will be sitting on the top and the bottom. That's instead of going on the side. I find that the top and the bottom is easier uh, and we'll be able to create this sort of line as well. So I'll set up the router. Okay, so I've set up the router. You can see it's just underneath that radius so it's not going to take the full radius and I'll just like to put the fuselage in the vise just obviously make sure that the bearings not going to hit anything so you've got a nice clear run as it comes over the uh, the edge there do need to get be careful that once it gets to this thin section it doesn't fall off the bearing and actually dig in so I like to just go straight off and I don't don't attempt to go around that corner so instead of try, uh, instead of trying to go around there I'll just sand that later and actually run the router straight off so this is the first section that we're going to do so it's essentially the bottom remembering we've got our line here so we need to go in front of that we're going to go all the way and off the front similar to this you can see starting here all the way and off the front. So let's do it. Okay, so that's the first radius done. So you can see how that's come up. It's a bit rough, but we're gonna sand that anyway. Uh, but you can see the router makes pretty light work of it. And let's do the other side. So I'll just set it up the same way. But of course, I just find that I prefer to route on this side, pushing that way. Um, the way that's the way that it's sort of chipping or, or uh, cutting properly and so I spin it around I'll start at the nose this time and actually stop at the line at the back I just want to give you a couple of tips for routing this. One thing is when the router bit starts to get hot, it'll start to uh, grab a bit of the aluminium and it can wrap around the, the tooth of the bit and start to chatter. And so one way to fix that, or you can do this anytime, is actually just spray some WD-40 along the aluminium before you router it. And that'll be enough lubricant just to run. You can see that this actually created a really nice, where I, where I sprayed before, whereas 
this, if you can see that, maybe not in the light, but it's sort of more rough where it chattered through. So you can just spray a bit of WD-40, that really helps with the bit. Uh, the other thing is that sometimes I, I like to do multiple passes, so you don't just put it in and just drive along the bearing the whole time. If you can actually just have light pressure and just take part of it off and then actually come back with a nice clean sort of finishing run, that will give you a better finish as well. So that's all we're going to do for the shaping, which is exciting. Now we'll just be sanding this up to make it sort of feel smoother and, and finish it. But next, before we do that, I like to countersink all of the holes that we need to do. So that when you do the final sand, it makes everything really smooth. So to countersink, that's what we'll do right now. When it comes to countersinking, you can find any countersink in bit. You could even use a regular drill bit. You can see I've got two options here. This one has more teeth on it, but it's better suited to wood. It's really hard to push this into aluminium. It doesn't bite enough. This one is actually a tungsten carbide router bit. Uh, so it's a little rough, it doesn't leave a perfect finish, but it definitely is, is enough to push down into the aluminium, which is why I like to use it. The other thing that you're really looking for with your countersinking bit, and this will go for the, for the fuselage and also the wing, is that the pitch is the same as the screw. So hopefully you can see that, but that is perfect so that we've got the right angle, so as the screw head comes down, it will seat perfectly into the countersink. So what we're going to do is, looking at the fuselage, we're going to be, be doing the three holes that join to the mast, so the mast screws on the bottom side of the fuselage. So make sure you mark them, you can see I've marked them here, so that we don't accidentally do the top. And we're going to countersink it far enough in that the screw head seats perfectly flat, so we've got a nice smooth surface, hydrodynamic surface there underneath uh, to make sure that the screw head is not protruding. As well as that, we just nick these, if you will, so very light countersink on all of the rest of the screws just so that we've got a very small chamfer so when we're putting the screws in and everything, everything goes really smoothly, we don't have any sharp edges, but it's not really a countersink, okay, so you're just taking a very small amount, but it's these three that we're going to really drive in and make sure these screws seat nice and flat. So I like to use the drill press, you could just use a, an ordinary drill for this, but I prefer the drill press, so I'm going to set this up. And... There we go, that looks really nice, nice and flat. So I like to just do the first one all the way so that I can see about how big that is and I can do the other ones to match. So now with the rest, you're just basically a very light something like that really small amount just so that like I said it's not a sharp edge okay so that is all done we've got our three main counter sinks and I've just taken just the very sharp burr off all of the other holes on all sections and the next step is to sand it so we're just going to sand it up this stage is really just to make it look and feel good so we're just going to be sanding all of the hard surfaces any hard edges and all these little highs and lows just making it really feel smooth and and take it to that finished standard I did just want to mention again we definitely don't want to sand any surface that is going to have a connection so the top of the mar uh, sorry the top of the uh, the top of the front wing where that connects and also where it connects to the mast and also the bottom here where it connects to the rear wing. So I'm just going to be using a random orbital and basically sanding it like you would sand a piece of wood and then we finish it by hand going lengthways with some 120 and then finish 
with 400 wet and dry. So I'm going to start sanding now. So now that we've done the random orbital and really just taken all of the hard edges off so it's nice and smooth, everything's looking good, now I'd like to move to a block and some sandpaper. So starting with 100 grit, then I'll go to 220, and then either 3, 320 or 400, wet and dry is fine. When you're sanding with the block, you want to be going along the length of the fuselage. So really sanding from front to back and again, avoiding these areas where we're gonna have any connections, but just, this is purely cosmetic at this point, so you're just trying to make it look and feel nice. Uh, also, just hitting off any of these corners, so you can just sort of sand them just very gently so that you've, you're not gonna, you don't have any really sharp edges anywhere. So I finished sanding and that means we are done with the fuselage. So that's really that's really good news. Uh, it's come up really well. I'm really happy with it actually. That one inch by one inch size, I think it feels really solid and it doesn't feel too heavy. Partly I think because we slimmed so much out of it in the machining. So it'd be cool to see how much weight we did remove. We did weigh it in earlier videos and at the, in the last video I'm going to go through all of those dimensions and weights and everything as well. And so I think that uh, this is a really nice component of the system. So I'm happy with the way it's come up. This is completely done now. We're ready to bolt it to the mast. We're ready to bolt it to the wings. You can see the finish. It's just a sanded finish, but what I did do was I actually sanded it and then I just rubbed it with some oil and a rag, essentially. But that is a completed component. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you're following along. And yeah, like I said, I will see you in the next videos. I'm going to finish the wings. It might not be apparent in the videos, but basically the way that I've done it is I was working on the wings all the way up until the point that I was filling the holes and backfilling along the trailing edge. And then because I needed to, that was only a short day and I needed 24 hours for that to dry, I started on the fuselage. And so now we've done the fuselage and we're going to get back to the wings tomorrow. But of course it doesn't matter uh, how you're doing it, but that's just the way that I've uh, scheduled it. So yeah, thanks again for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.